These are not books. These are film catalogs. There are more in the bag. They list movies available to buy or to rent in very, very small type, about 50 or 60 on each page almost. And there are many of these catalogs are available. Every time a new catalog comes out, I check it out to see if I haven't missed anything. I don't know if I should say this or not, but I have to confess. I have seen all of them. <laughs> I'm carrying them in the bag all the time to check it out. And uh, it is a heavy load to carry. But sometimes I think that the opposite of it might be worse. Opposite of this would be perhaps ignorance of cinema. Uh, yeah. I have to get rid of some of the formalities. Yes, there will be an attendance call. You'll have to sign in. If some of you are just passed by the, by the signing sheet and I didn't see signatures there, <clears throat> if you forgot to sign in, please sign in. And uh, we'll start exactly at 7 o'clock. If we wanted to start later, I would have said 7.10, but what's the difference? You would be late anyway. So. Uh, at 7 o'clock, we'll start. Uh, and missed classes cannot be made up of this infamous class. I'm not going to come for individual people with bag of books and catalogs. Don't ask me to do it. Um, also, I'll not tolerate absences. If you are dead, of course, don't come, but I still would like to see a certificate from the funeral home or someplace that you are really dead. Or lie down and I use a pin on you and uh, to be sure. Um, this is my house, and of course, you'll have to play by my rules, no matter how silly or stupid they are. And yes, this is a letter co course from A to Z. There will be many, many papers. Um, and they will be due on time. If not, I'll ask John Pruitt to go after you. <laughs> and you you'll get your comeuppance. Those who un enrolled into this class uh, by false rumors or false friends, we recommend it you are in for surprise. Perhaps you have enemies who suggested to have this class. Check your friends. I'll close my eyes, and if you want to leave, please leave now. No such luck. Uh, this course is a trap. Uh, there will be about 100 books to read. I started compiling the list, and I'm on 64 right now. <laughs> and uh, in case I don't finish the list, I'll, uh, you have to leave your addresses, and I'll mail them out to you in <laughs> May, May or June, and uh, you'll have to read them. Uh, also, there will be film catalogs to memorize. <laughs> I'll call a page. 
And you better give me the titles. It's not a, it's not a joke. Uh, that will teach you something. Uh, there will be tests, of course. I don't know what there will be, but um, there will be. I'm working on them. I have never given a test in my, any of my classes, so this is a challenge for me to design a test for 62 of you people. So if you don't get out fast out of this class, you better think twice why you did this. But on the other hand, keep on coming. Uh, don't get disillusioned too soon. This is unsteady. <laughs> it's not attached. <laughs> I'll keep my hands up it. Ryan, where are you? Uh, don't get disillusioned. Keep your eyes open and uh, your, your mouth shut. <coughs> I'll be the one who's talking. You won't have much of a chance to say anything. And don't form a quick opinion of me. Wait till the midterm when I'll ask you to write something about me. And then the fun starts for me. I'll read those remarks. You better watch out. Also, this course is not about cinema. It is about me, and I hope as we progress, <laughs> as we progress through these weeks, it's going to be about you, too. I'll try to turn you outside, from in out, and uh, hopefully I may be forced to, you to see yourselves a little bit more differently. and to bring you to a standstill, perhaps, once in a while, so that you could place yourself at that moment in your life and see where you came and where you are going. I'll try to do that. <clears throat> also, also, this is not a lecture course. I never, never went to college. I'm a fifth grade dropout. Uh, Leon doesn't know that. I have a feeling he suspects that there's something, <laughs> something wrong with me. Uh, you know, Bard is full of professors, PhDs, and I was told now that Leon will not hire anyone anymore to teach unless they have PhD doctor's degree. What the hell these doctors do? Make a pulse? I don't understand. And these professors, PhD, with, they have beards. They're, they're very serious, many of these people. Uh, they don't smile. They rarely say hello when you meet them in, in the paths here, but they mostly want you to write papers. They're very big about papers. And what they do, they normally have books to read for you, and uh, then in class they speak about these books, and then they ask you to write about these books, books that, books that have been written already. <laughs> they say, read Dostoevsky. Then he talks for 45 minutes about the book, and then you have to go home and write about it. Or Dante. Dante is a big one at Bard. He wrote a big book, you know, Dante. And um, all in Italian. <laughs> Uh, I bet you, all of you have read the first couple lines of that book in translation. 
uh, or Karl Marx. You know, he wrote uh, some heavy stuff, difficult to read. They all wrote books, uh, and some pretty good ones, and uh, all these books are available today in all languages. Uh, read them. But today we must have 60,000 people writing PhDs about Dante. Telephone rings and said, hello? Oh, I'm busy. I'm writing a book about Dante. You call me, call me in, in, in a year or two. <laughs> so we have another book, another PhD. And what they, the hell they will do, they will be explaining to you what Dante meant and all that big book. When you were small, your mother or your father or your nana read books to you. Today, I think you are big enough to read for yourselves. But you still have these PhD professors, learned professors, explaining to you what you have read. Semester after semester, bored. Have you seen these professors? Sometimes they forget what they have been telling you. Oh, okay. oh yeah, sure. I don't think you need these bearded nanas anymore. <laughs> My advisee, uh, not long ago, last semester, canceled an appointment. Uh, she said that she had to write a paper on Carl's manifesto. I said, what? Karl Marx wrote it already. Can you do better than that? <laughs> so no professor told me to write about it. Carl's manifesto reads like poetry. Leave it like that. Nobody believes in it anymore. <sighs> I don't know. It's a waste of time. Writing about something that has been written and written and written and written. That's perhaps what's wrong with some of our colleges, and um, it bothers me. Can anyone say anything more what Shakespeare said? <laughs> if you presume to be better than Shakespeare, explaining us what he really meant, if you are Catholic, you know that's a presumption. Presumption is a capital sin. If you feel that you know more about something else, that's a sin. And there are now people who are counting words in Shakespeare, how many times he used certain word. And they get PhDs for that. Today is much easier. Of course, they have computers. The computer counts the words, so it's an easy PhD. You know, I think anybody of you would like to have PhD in Shakespeare or Dante or on on word count. Go for it. You made it. Also, they have gardens of all the flowers mentioned in Shakespeare books. That's not literature. That's horticulture. Ah, yeah, yeah. I have a book here. Where's my book? Who took it here? This is real stuff. Oh, excuse me. It says, Dante Alighieri, The Divina Commedia. It's a big book. has pictures in it, too. And, um, uh, yeah. Now, what I wanted to say about this book is that before I read the whole book, I want to show you something else that I found in the corridor. This is a book, PhD book. Uh, Purgatorio, volume two, this is what I found. There's a whole book explaining what Dante meant in, in Purgatorio in two books. Uh, and this is just a small part of uh, Dante's writing. And, uh, uh, it took him uh, a couple years to explain to us what Dante meant. And uh, Dante was a clever writer, you know. 
uh, he wrote a pretty good book, if you have read it. And uh, uh, why can't you read it? Why do I have to read that PhD book? I don't understand. I'll read it to you from Dante. Canto primo. Nel mezzo del cammin di nostra vita mi ritrovai per una selfs oscura che la diritta via era smarita. Well said. <laughs> also, it sounds good in translation. Givenimo nu eas pusakelio, ashi eo e tokia tamsa yua da gira, kurnira ne kelio ne takelio. Can you say better than that? You have to write a book to explain that. Read it. Read it in your own translation. Okay. Dante was a poet. Many times he didn't know what the hell he wrote. His concern was to end the line in that stupid rhyme he started. <laughs> he had to go for pages and pages, and it's not easy. Try sometimes. Get that, that made the command in Nostra Vita, Tita, Tita, for what, 300 pages? It, it will drive you nuts if you do it. Don't do it. Most likely it drove him nuts too. And um, same thing is with films now. There are thousands of books written about films. They explain to you what you have seen, what you, you haven't seen, what you should have seen, what you have missed, and what you don't have to see in the movie. It's criminal. I think this, all this film writing about films is as criminal as writing about Dante. I know I speak badly about some of these people, but um, I know quite, quite well some of the, especially the film people. They're good people, but they write these books. And I think they deserve anything we can dish out for them including the Inferno, because that's where they will all end up. <laughs> this class will not read any of those film books, except those 100 I'll send you the list of. I will, I'll not discuss or discourse on the aesthetics of cinema, because I don't know what all that means. But I'll not speak badly of cinema because angels are watching us. They're flying over now. Be nice. I'll speak of cinema as magic because I'm be bewitched. Bewitched by the silver screen, by the flickering image. I shall speak of cinema as joy and happiness because I'm in love. The movies I'll show, most of them were made way before you were born. Some before your mothers were born. These thousands and thousands of films are guilty of what I am today. Some of the films I'll show I haven't seen for some time. I'm afraid that my memory of them my, might not match your or my expectations. You are much more jaded than I am. And um, suffer with me, please. What I'm trying to do w with these films and with my class here, I'm trying to recapture my first kiss. Let me place myself in history. I was born one year before Rudolf Valentino died, two years before the first TV demonstration, 
three years before Walt Disney made the first cartoon, Plain Crazy. Six years, and this is trivia, listen, six years before, Theodore Dreiser, the writer, slapped Sinclair Lewis twice at the dinner of American writers in honor of the Russian novelist Boris Pelnyak. Russian novelist. Who has read it? Boris Pelnyak. I looked up in the book and I couldn't find his name. And 10 years before, Ford Motor Company started cultivating soybeans. And Frank Sinatra st still wore shorts when he was chased from the stoop in Hoboken by my mother-in-law, Maria Antonia. Snoops was tried and found guilty. He was fined $100, not for teaching evolution, but for, for not teaching the Bible. You didn't know that. When I was born, Ford car, new, cost $769. The prohibition price for a case of beer was $38. So about 20 cases of beer could buy a car. If that price could still stand, I think, over a couple of weekends around the campus and around the old gym, just collecting the empties, I could buy a car, perhaps. Yeah. And uh, when I was born, these films were playing in New York. Gold Rush by Chaplin, Phantom of the Opera, the original, The Last Laugh, more now, The Freshman, Buster Keaton. Today they're all, they're all classics. That was a good year to be born. I was born in an old, very old country. It does not remember its own history. Less than 100 years from today, Lithuanians still worshipped um, oak trees, fire, snakes, thunder. Thunder was the big one. Thunder, watch out for thunder. We were pagans, and um, I'm a pagan yet. I was going to sing a pagan song and tap dance, but um, I, we didn't get the floor in time, so forget it. I won't sing it. I grew up on a farm. I was uninformed, uneducated. I was ignorant of everything. I knew nothing at all. Nothing what you, the jaded generation, know so well. Who would have thought then, when I was running after cows barefooted in the cold grass in the morning, uh, who could have thought that I would be here? There I was. My world was five kilometers on each side. My world was only what I could see from the hill on my farm. I didn't know what the ocean was. I haven't seen anything. I didn't know anything. And who could have told that I would end up in the College of Liberal Arts, Bard? I hear myself rubbing shoulders with professors of literature, horticulture, and uh, all other. Now, we have even more than that since we are multicultural, multidisciplinary, and all that. Uh, they all have diplomas, of course, and um, life can be strange. When I was young and green, I was very romantic and very idealistic. At 14, I had memorized complete books of poetry, Pushkin, Byron, Shelley, of course in translation. Memorization of poetry was a tradition in our, in our culture because many of us couldn't read. Uh, so we would walk and quote poems. 
At 14, I haven't seen a movie yet. I didn't know what a, what a movie was. I didn't know the word movie. Also, I didn't know that movies were made with cameras or film. It was a mystery. One day, age 14, I walked five kilometers to a, to a next village where there was a church. And in a parish hall, there was a white sheet hanging. Um, I look at the sheet and said, ah, the movie must be behind. So I was trying to sneak behind, and I was sitting as close to the screen as I could. Because I didn't know what it was. It could be uh, something jumping, could be running around, or uh, just a big mud ball or something. I didn't know what it was. And uh, uh, so, so it happened. At 14, I lost my innocence of cinema. I saw Captain Blood, the greatest movie ever made, I would say. It was magic. Errol Flynn speaking in Lithuanian on screen, of course. Uh, at that time, I still haven't heard a foreign language, so I presume that the whole world spoke Lithuanian. And uh, it was obvious uh, to everybody, of course. And uh, when it started, it was magic. On this watch, sheet, people were walking back and forth. There were trees in the wind, palm trees. I didn't know what a palm is, but they looked like a big thing there. And then uh, later on, I uh, find out the name of the tree. It's a palm tree. And uh, because I was so stupid at that time. And, uh, there was no electricity where I grew up, and um, outside the parish hall, there was a generator. I didn't know it was a generator. I know today it was a generator that was producing electricity to run the projector. And the ge generator kept breaking down. <laughs> so the people on the screen would begin to slow down and then disappear. And then again they would appear suddenly again go walk around and disappear i thought that's what movie is all about i didn't know that was a generator doing that breakdown and i thought that's what the movie is about it was great i loved it i wish we could uh, i was trying to hook up our projector so that it would uh, burn out and break down but uh, i was told don't do it don't do it that's uh, bad for the projector and uh, and it was an uh, unbelievable experience. <sighs> Cinemagic experience for me. It changed my life. Even today, I can load the camera, I can put the film on the projector, I can teach people how to edit. I still don't know how the hell that those single frames become moving images. And I don't want to know about the persistence of vision and the uh, into I don't know. It's I, I prefer for the same reason, I prefer to depend on magic that how the huge airplane stays in the air without falling down. Or if a huge metal ship stays afloat, doesn't sink. I've I don't want to know about displacement of water or airspeed or anything. I prefer the mysteries of life. More magic. I was trying to locate a print of Captain Blood dubbed in Lithuanian. I located one in uh, Washington, but there was not enough time to ship it. So unfortunately, you will have to watch it in English. Uh, I mentioned there will be no breaks during these nights. Uh, no cigarette breaks, no bathroom breaks. You just have to suffer. When I'm finished, when the film is finished, 
we are finished. So try to see these movies uh, with new eyes or eyes of a child. It can be done. Try to strip away the layers and layers of sophistication and uh, all that sitting before the tube. Strip away your smugness and no all attitude. Let's try. Let's try to be innocent again. Let's try to be very, very young when the first kiss is still possible. Let's pretend that everything is possible and let's stay like that always. Let there be magic in our lives and let's have the first kiss again. Before the movie, I'll read from the good book. It is chapter 1, verse 3 from Genesis. First, I read the original Hebrew. And it says, Yahi or In Latin translation, it's a little bit longer. No, not it says fiat lux. And in vulgar English translation is let there be light. Ivan, go. <laughs> <laughs> 